Oh, that's cool. Thanks to Charlie. <laughs> I will bring it next time. All right. Yeah, if you want to just write his email, then yep, you I will. Have yeah. to put it out on your wall to be here. Spray it in with the Seattle Tom Grant at the bottom. Yep, I do. Great, thank you. So we kind of know which is which. Yes, because I wrote Jim Dashby <laughs> next to it. Oh, yeah. Is he a junior? No, no. Okay, we're now live. So, we call the meeting the board. We're meeting the border at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, right on the dot. Um, in terms of the agenda, uh, I will remind you that there was a new one put in your mailbox because of the time of the next meeting is now seven o'clock. So that is there. Um, as far as the agenda on your whole business, and this is mostly for the benefit of Amanda, but um, your whole business, we will also be talking about the facility, the ad hoc facilities committee. Before we get started, I wanted to bring to everyone's attention, we got a lovely letter from Concerned Jews thanking, uh, thanking us for the donations and getting them, and specifically calling out our Mary, who has two drives down to what the great picture is now. So we're just going to pass that around if people want to take a look at that. With that said, I look around, I do not see any members of the public. So I guess we'll move directly into approval of the minutes, Amanda. So we all of the meeting minutes, which I hopefully comply with Mary's help. And I don't think anybody had any changes except Mary had a couple of minutes. And when I didn't, <laughs> so if you see the little post-it notes, please just ignore those. I thought I got rid of them. But um, uh, so I'd like to make a motion to move the minutes of January 17th, 2023. Have I heard you? Okay, so I'll add it here. Okay, so we'll make a motion to move them. Cami, a second. Katie, and any discussion? Call the motion. All those in favor of approving the minutes of January 17th board meeting. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Great job, by the way. Yeah. 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 Really nice. So you had an excellent oh mentor. Who, yeah. And I actually was impressed with those people. Okay, Katie, I move on to Treasures Report. Oh, all right, all right, sorry. Is it open? I'm still working on it. Um, well, you're well first, did anyone have any questions or comments? Yes, and you it's beautiful. Oh, okay. Perfect. Um, yeah, I just I highlighted what what I thought was um, just kind of an overview, first of all, um, where we're at, and then the one budget line that was unusually high, but with a justification. And then um Anything that was under a thousand dollars, I left off, but anything that was over a thousand dollars, I did include with explanation. Um, and then noteworthy as well was the final unemployment payment to our former employee um, has been paid, so that is no longer an expense that we will be shouldering. Um, and that was really grand. All right, with that in, in mind, I would entertain um, someone to make the motion to accept the off warrant for the amount of $118,612.88. That would be Charlie. A second. Mary, any questions, conversation? Any? 
discussion on that motion? Just are people comfortable with this format? Yes. 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 Very yes. 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 the off warrant in the amount of one hundred eighteen thousand six hundred twelve dollars and eighty-eight cents. Those in favor? Any polls? No, it's unanimous. Now we move on to the warrant. Um, anybody want to make a motion about authorizing the president to sign the warrant? Okay, Amy will make the motion. A second. Charlie, the discussion on the board, which was the uh, uh, audit and if you want to explore your expenses. Do you vote on that motion? All those in favor? In opposition, no, but it's unanimous. Okay, finally, the year 9% over, uh, I will entertain a motion to approve the financials with 9% in your paper. Charlie's got that one. Any second? Also, Mary, any discussion? I entertain a vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Any don't have to ask a post if it's unanimous. <laughs> but okay. uh, great job. Yeah. yeah and, really and, um, it's, it's there's a lot to think, a lot to think about. Jill says it'll get easier and easier. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job. Yeah. Is that a format the where the dollar change? That's different. I yeah. like the dollar change year over year. Yeah. Yes, we wanted that there because it it helped me to see if it's appropriate because I don't really have any sort of baseline. So by looking at the year to year, then I can say, oh, this is unusually high. This is unusually low. This is about where it was. So why do we have that? I, yeah, I like it. Okay, now we'll move into the committee reports. Admin. I unfortunately didn't attend, <laughs> uh, but I did put a list together, which I guess we put for an agenda, which became the guide for what the group did. And, uh, and I thank Lynn for leading it. And there was the, the minutes, doing the minutes, which looked pretty good. Uh, does anybody have any questions or anything they want to discuss further on? What is going to be a water treatment? I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's the water treatment contract. We do have some yeah. motions. Yeah, when we need to okay. that the committee was bringing forward. Okay. Yeah, they're here. Yeah. Well, okay. I, mean, I can ask. You want me to just ask if anybody or, or, or no, the, for the committee? You'll yeah. be the first. Yeah, the, the first one is the uh, makes the motion to authorize the director to sign a one year contract with PL you know, Water Treatment, um, which is basically the same as last year for 3800 and, and Amanda, you don't have to put that parent part in the motion, you know, in your in, in the motion in the minutes. I can put the one, sorry. What's in the note? The, the little note, which oh, is okay, really gotcha. for us. That, 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 that was just for information. Okay. So, yeah. coming, I mean, I believe I'm right. I believe coming from the committee, we only require a second. The committee, committee makes the motion. And then we'll ask for a second. We ask for a second. So, is there someone who will second it? That would be Charlie. Charlie is. A lot of energy. No. <laughs> Charlie, now is there any second. discussion? So we have a first and a second. Any discussion about this? This is they, they are the ones who keep legionnaires and yeah, well, you know, make sure there's no legionnaires and test these water. 
What are they called? The cooling towers. Yeah. Water. You would call it the cooling tower. Uh -huh. It's something that has come up in recent years. We've had to do this before, but we did treatment of the testing that goes with it now. Okay, any other questions about it? If not, uh, we can vote. All those in favor of signing, authorizing to sign? Okay, it's unanimous. Second one is um, we did um, meet them and had a discussion on the Mulan contract and how it was calculated and what went into it um, last. It was after the last, uh, yeah, the not training. the committee, the training. And, um, and I believe the committee is satisfied at this point. I think the reality is it's not that we do it, but. Uh, so we authorized the president to sign the 2020 contract. So coming from the committee, I'm seeking a second. Yeah. Amy, any more discussion on that? There's a five percent increase for 2023, and we also just authorized payment of the first of those when you know, we signed the contract, but pay the first quarter fee. Did, did they give any justification for the what was the rest basically of? what it was is that uh, they developed a formula that was based on usage and other factors that went across the board but then we they had a limiting factor of a max of five percent based on our usage of their services and everything a little bit more i think we saved like three thousand dollars further increase okay. based on their formula. So now what went into the formula and everything? <laughs> <laughs> there was a sort of wishy-washy discussion, but that's there are always winners, you know, depending on what of the statistics they use. And I guess the piece I took away from it is the, our success at being a high circulation library that is loved by all. Is costing us, money. costing us money because it is one of the main factors that was used in the formula. So I certainly would not trade a <laughs> full circulation, but it's unfortunate that that's such an important piece yeah. of the formula. Is that something that, like, I know that our focus for the strategic plan is going to be our online versus in-person usage, is this something that that can address later on? Uh, they, uh, this is the first formula change they have put together in wow. several years, so five, eight, seven or 10 years. So I doubt, they, they heard, I felt that they heard us. And I think that there's a small chance that they will look at fine-tuning the formula maybe for next year based on our input. He sits there and he, I'll be honest. My feeling is that what, what they do is they develop a formula. They have 28 libraries, ranging from a library that runs on a few thousand dollars of volunteers and such to, to Albany, which is huge. And it's, he does his best to try and come up with a formula that he can justify to each library where they're being charged. It's not apples to apples. It's not apples to apples. If you really went yeah. apples to apples, the little libraries would just go up there. And I mean, there is another piece of it which has to do with buildings because there are some libraries, you know, the building and all of the costs of the space they operate in isn't part of their budget because they're a, you know, they're a municipal building and that also factors. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of- Because it goes in the total budget. Right. So Everything. there are a number of factors and it just happened that in the formula pieces they picked, it was not advantageous to East Greenwich Library. But we were capped below what it would have been a guardrail as it were. So we were capped at 5% so it wasn't worse. Mm -hmm. oh. So any more discussion, questions? Now I'll entertain a vote to uh, authorize the president of the board to sign the 2023 paper. 
All in favor, unanimous. For not being there, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, services committee. Along that same line. I know it's the same here, but it's an awesome job. I'd like to say earlier for you, your person not being ready for speech. It's a very strict issue. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Cammy, for doing the minutes. Oh, it looks like you had a really good meeting from minutes. Um, and I would say, I mean, everyone got them. I don't know if anyone had questions about anything that was in them. Um, so there's a couple motions for us to entertain that we, as the service committee, would like to recommend. As a committee, um, when we read the motions. Sure. So the service committee moves to approve the exhibits policy, which was revised and I'm coming from a committee. I need a second. Could be Charlie. I'll, I'll let it be my <laughs> This is my <laughs> Okay. Any discussion about that? Any questions? Can you just sort of give us a Oh, it's for, yeah, the exhibits policy is, um, it relates to the artwork and um, the artists that hangs things in the library. Um, well, it adds, adds the big room to it, right? And it adds, right, we added, yeah, we added the big meeting room to it. Um, and so it just gives guidelines as to what people who are going to be, or who want to place their work in the library, library of the library does work in response. And there's some insurance in terms of anything, which I thought was a good piece. If anything happens to their uh, materials or property, the library is not responsible for any of it. They are, you don't store their stuff. And again, um, there's also a um, uh, an opportunity for anyone who does not get on the exhibit is perfect. They can file something with Jill. And then I think more policy study would be the board to have their groups on that. Materials policy. So if anybody to, if anybody has any ideas or knows of people who would like to exhibit here, we now have an additional space. So please spread the word. And when will you start that, do you believe? Well, Paul started um, installing it today. So I'm not sure if he was able to finish it or not. But very soon we'll be able to you know, get everything up on the website once this is approved and we'll start. And will it be in like the next newsletter, you'll say? Probably. Yeah. An e newsletter for sure. Hey, any other you achieve future student artwork? Yes, and that will, we are hoping that that will be a great space for, for kid student artwork. Nice big opening with the kids. And so, the difference between the meeting room and out here is that everybody sees this all the time. In the meeting room, it'll be limited by meetings. Yeah, and also if they can have an event that's yes. like around, which would be great. So they yeah. can have an event right with their artwork, which mm -hmm. sometimes there have been challenges and there have been, you know, the artists want to you know, have a, a group right in the hallway, which disrupts traffic flows. This will allow that. So it'll be, we're looking forward to it. Special thanks to um, Susan, Kathy, and Paul for their work on this. Any other questions? Discussion? Not all those in favor. Um, okay then. <laughs> Oops, unanimous. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a learning process. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have another. Yes, the MOU. So um, this. That's the, the MOU with the friends. Yes. I think the motion should include some reference. Is that right as it's written? Oh, yeah. 
Well, I'm well, guessing the, the next what the most the actual motion does. You're right. I, I could have. It probably would. It says so the memo or MOU between the friends. Great, that's, that's not it should say that. It should say that. It should say that. Oh, it might just be a typo, but we can adjust. Well, there's two motions. Well, the second one is the MOU is to just services committee offer. Oh, that's the authorizer. So you you could move it and then someone had to adjust. There you go. Okay, so any <laughs> coming from committee, we have a motion. Any second on that? Thank you. Sure, second. Okay, Michael. And so now, would anybody? So I think you have then amended. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody want to amend the title? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> amended to include reference to the friends. The library or just the friends? Not, yeah, say MOU between the library and the friends. Now we have to vote on the amendment. Do we have to get a second on the amendment or just? So let's vote on the amendment. Everyone who approves of changing the motion to add between the library and the friends. Almost fell out. Yeah. That's unanimous. So the amendment is approved. So now let's go back to any discussion on the idea, which is to approve this MOU as the board. Talk about it at all, Mary? I and we wanted to get something down in writing that kind of establishes the relationship between the library and the friends, um, what the friends can expect from the library, what the library can expect from the friends, um, and, you know, the the board's role in the library. Um, I just think it's good policy. It, it is, it's been covered a few times in the trainings uh, that we've had as in terms of trainings for our best practices to really be clear with the role of friends versus the library and to some extent the trustees. Other discussion? I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. The exhibit A yeah. is putting that in here. Has this been correlated to with what's in our documentation as to what roles the director plays and the trustees play? Existing policies. Existing policies. I think in our bylaws, um, so that is that I, what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. so the, it, it, I, I, this needs to correlate with our bylaws, and yeah. I guess we follow that trustee manual, yes. what's outlined as our role and the library director role. There's nothing in here. It contradicts. That contradicts that. Yeah. I don't know that I, I personally didn't put it next to, you know, but I, I mean, I do think that that's what we kind of use. I read it, and everything in it seemed in line, you know, what that we do, hiring of the director, and we oversee budget and policies. And, Library operates and the friends advocating for these funds. But I, I didn't look through every document. Yeah. You meant with the bylaws. Yes. I can't think of any other policies that the library has that spells something like this out. And it's definitely in agreement with the trustee men. Right. right. I think it came from the <laughs> 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 The template. But you know, if something is there's nothing saying that this can't be adjusted, 
if, if something comes well, up. Or well, policies. if something comes up and policies are changed, we have to remember to come back. And mm -hmm. But this, the policy actually says that every year this will be reviewed and be reaffirmed. So that's okay, a good that piece, is that if we had done yeah. something, I mean, hopefully, as we looked at policies, we would look back at this mm -hmm. and just like we think about bylaws when we update policies and change out this. Mm -hmm. There was something inconsistent. I mean, it could well be that the policy gets adjusted. Yeah. And, and, and truthfully, the, the MOU is really between the library and the friends. So there's not a whole lot. I mean, the board has the tangential oversight of some of the library things. Um, so I think if there was something contradictory, we'd be looking more at library policy. So I don't want to upset the apple cart, no, but no. should this then really be between the friends and the library? So the library director and the trustees yes. are together. It is the MOU. It's, 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 it's the addendum. It's just this is just information clarification. that clarifies the rules, but it okay. is between the friends right. and the library. Right. And it says in it that the board is kind of in support of the library. Mm -hmm. That is not right. So we don't have, we are not the signees of this stuff. But as a kind of like a memorandum of understanding, just like the contacts and those types of things to be able to authorize this to sign. So, well, just I think we're going to authorize it, right? We're going to approve it from our state. So that's, we're okay with it. Yes. Now it goes to the friends. And once they're in agreement, and, and vote for it, then everybody, then everybody can sign it. Yeah. Any more questions? Any more discussion? If not, I'll entertain a vote to approve the service, to approve the MOU as presented. All those in favor? Do you have another um, motion that you wanted to bring forward, Mary? Uh, we have two minutes. Yes, you do. Yeah, and if I have, I no, we just no, we just we didn't want to bump it. I will. I can present a motion. Um, so with the amended version, yes. Well, actually, the amended version, yes. As, as presented, the service committee authorizes the library director to present the MOU to the Friends Board for consideration. It's coming from committee, I need a second. That would be Charlie. And any discussion about this? Okay. Okay. Should this be the service committee that authorizes the director, or should this be the board that authorizes yes. the director? Now it has to yes. Because once we approve it, it's the board. And actually, I hate to say it, there's a more that appears that that's recommends that really the board all of these motions should be. Sorry, Amanda, they really all. So the book, so the. the that's the service committee yeah, recommends, recommends yes, but to then, the board. Correct, but now the yeah. motion really has to be that the board approves the, the exempt policy and the board approves, approves the MOU, right? I think it's the service committee recommends to approve, to recommends that the board approve, right? Is that what each, That's each motion what should say? Yeah, what they should have right. the motion is. We got that, Amanda? I think so. That's some form of it. Um, and then, so I mean, it, I just think in terms of discussion, we no one will sign it until both parties have agreed. Is that Other questions? Any other questions? 
Well, I'm very thrilled. <laughs> For a meeting, I didn't go to it. Just pretty good. <laughs> uh, we can have a vote on this. Uh, does the board uh, authorize the library director to present this to the friends? Unanimous. Moving on. The teacher director report. First, are there any questions about the narrative? I like that it was in alignment with the strategic focusing on the document that we're using. Very helpful and clear. There are some typos. Okay, you can email them to me. I'd be happy to adjust them. Thank you. Okay, um, a couple of exciting things that are not in the board report. Circulation for this month, and just in terms of traffic to the library and circulation, it's getting busy, and particularly on the weekends. So we're, we're, people are coming back to the library. We have a 33% increase in checkouts this year over last year, which is great. 92% of them are at the checkout desk and 8% of them are at the drive through window. We had 102 new library card registrations this month. And that was after a really big month last month. So we're, we're it's, it's been really positive. Staff are feeling positive about it. Um, been busy, Question. which is great. Yes. Yes. You say we have a hundred and some odd new library cards. Does yes. that count people who are renewing? That is brand new registrations, not renewals. Not renewals. Yeah. And they did some kind of programs too, right? The didn't they went to we did, I think we went to Chinese this, this month. I'm trying to remember exactly what it is, but we did um it's in my report where yeah. where the team went. Molly was at Winterfest. Yeah. It was Winterfest at Goff. Thank yeah. you. It was Winterfest at Goff. Thank you. Um, so Molly you see, and, is that where you see like the bulk of the? Uh, that's part of it. Yeah, some of it. It's it's not all. It looks like we had fifty four new East Greenbush cards, eleven Skodak cards, thirty two other. So just Rensselaer County. Um, four of my cards, which are kids without parental permission. So the kid's probably coming over on the bus or walking from high school. And then one out of system card. So the out of system cards come with a fee. That would be Columbia County typically. Not, not Albany, Mexico County. And 18 uh, online registrations. Does an online register ever have to set foot or do they? Yeah. yeah, so they're only at valid, I think, for a period of 10 days and then they have to come into the library. And we've, we've had conversations system wide about really simplifying the process and do we do they need to come in at all? Is that is there value in that or not? So we've had we have not made any decisions, but there has been a lot of um, thoughtful conversation and, and research kind of debating the pros and cons of that and how to simplify the process. And are there, you know, this is kind of what we've talked about with strategic planning. Are there people that are strictly using the library digitally? And is that okay? And considering our FIA training and people who might not be able to get to a library. That makes it very accessible. If they don't have to set foot in, so not as good as Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the winter um, right now, well, January is we also kicked off our winter meeting. That's part two event to adventure. 117 adult registrate um, re adults registered for the program, which is great. So all of our reading programs, not just youth programs, keep increasing, which is really nice. And we have, you probably noticed if you've been in the library, the map out there where um, uh, participants are encouraged to showcase their favorite vacation spot. So that's really cute. And there's a little passport if you register and you want the paper 
paper version. There's a little paper passport. Uh, let's see, going off another highlight. We had the preschool fair on January 21st. So that was great. First, you know, that was a highlight that we had yearly, and we finally brought it back this year. We we're thrilled about it and great participation. So got me to come to this library in the first place. Is it? It is. When we were looking for preschools, we saw the preschool fair in 2018, and we came specifically from this library. We live in Wood Park, so. Oh, wow. Um, we traveled for that. Yeah. And then we decided not because of the library, but we also moved here shortly afterwards. So. Preschool fair is fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Feedback. I will share that with Jen and Molly and the team. Jen puts on the preschool fair every year. She, she has a great spreadsheet that's been going back years and years with all the preschools, and it's great. A couple of highlights that were that are on our, I've read them to you before, our patron feedback page on our staff intranet. Um, February 9th, uh, we, someone posted that we had a patron on the phone calling to get her pin. So she's so happy that the library budget passed. Loved bringing her grandkids here for the program. She has visions, problems, and our large print section is the best she has ever seen. Wow. I thought that was a unique one that was nice yeah. to bring to the group. Uh, and another fun one from January. Thank you, Molly and the staff. We visited the library today. Make your own robot kit was a huge favorite. My four-year-old grandson and his mom had fun putting it together. And you'll notice that there's a lot of grandchildren. That's a huge demographic right now. The youth services department is really seeing a shift in their story times with who's coming to story time. A lot of grandparents are bringing their kids. I need a lot of friends with grandparents when my kids were little and some it like worked with their kid. Mm -hmm. And some I like stayed friends with the grandmother, but like didn't hit it off with the, the yeah, like I had a couple of like grandmother friends who I still like am in touch with. So it, it is, it's a great resource. We had an interesting, um, yeah. there's a B group that came in this month. Oh, Did you see that? It was fascinating to me how the Beekeepers Association, how many people came in from all over for the Beekeepers Association. I came in to get something from the library of things, and I was like, there's so many people here. And then I realized it was for the beekeeping, and I thought that was beautiful. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was fun. A couple of other updates. The Special thanks to our team here on staff for a lot of flexibility this month because we had several facilities issues that have now been fixed, but this dividing door, our new dividing door was stuck this far open, so the room couldn't be opened like this, so we had to really switch a lot of programs. Um, that was very frustrating. And then this camera, the audience camera, was not working. And we had a hybrid program where you need the presenter camera and the audience, or sorry, that's the presenter camera, the presenter camera and the audience camera, we needed them both. And so there was a lot of just adjusting this month and, you know, juggling programs and, and a lot of extra maintenance work, a lot of calling groups. And so thanks to our staff, it's fixed, which is good. We have had the sign company come in. Um, you may notice that, well, you know that the sign has been out for quite a long time. This sign out here, the smaller sign, or the sign for just the library, they can't do anything with those lights. Um, so they're getting us a cost to update those lights to L&D, and then we'll have to decide what we want to do, if we want to do that or not. Down at the, um, the sign that's shared by the three organizations, there's something funny going on. There's power, but that we're still trying to figure out. There's somehow there was a switch that was put in at some point. So they're going to come back again, but um, and they're going to come back this time with an electrician of their choice because our we've had our electrician go twice and not be able to fix it. So now they're going to have an electrician that's familiar with. The signs. The the guy who put it in. 
Well, it's the same company. So they came out. So now they're bringing, they need to fix something electrical. The sign is, there's power, but it's not the right power. I'm not sure why it just stopped working midway. That doesn't make sense Rookies. to me, but we're working on it. Yeah, yeah so we're, this, we're working on it. this is fixed. Yeah, that took a while to get them to come out here. That was not easy to get them here, which is frustrating because they're 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 a company in Massachusetts. So that doesn't bode well because <laughs> it's been less than a year. Is there a warranty on it? Yeah, it should still be. It's I think it's still under. Year. I think it's still under warranty. Less than a year. The other, the other pieces we had the camera or the new, not the camera, the new projector. Um, it's still over in the multi-purpose room, so that was broken. Remember, and so now we had a replacement in there. So all this AV equipment and all this electronic stuff is um, back up and running. Back up and running. Related to that, I mean, I, I have to say, every time I come in, it's what makes me happy to see all the people coming in the use of the rooms. Is it mm -hmm. continuing to grow? It's continuing to grow. Yeah, because it, it's amazing to me how many times I come in at different times of day and there's stuff on the signs or there are people in the rooms, and it gives me joy. You know, yeah. I, in a, I would think for staff, it's very, it, I mean, I, I don't know if that's part of why the library traffic is up, but I'll bet it's part of it. I'm sure it's got to be part of it. And just there's a, there's a different demographic that's coming in too. It's a, it's a shifting, changing demographic in here, which is nice. It's more diverse, um, there, and, and there's also a lot of families coming in on the weekend. So we've got our regulars who are here during the day, every week. And then over the weekend, it's busy. And it's just people that are kind of here once a month. Or well, I don't know how often they're here, but they're not, not necessarily regulars, although there are some just weekend regulars. We talk for a minute about the strategic plan sure. during this. Absolutely. Do you want to kind of give an update of where we are? I see. Sure. So we have, in, as you know, we've engaged our strategic planning consultant, Maxine Flyweiss and Associates. Maxine Flyweiss and Erica Byrne. We had a kickoff meeting with Lynn, Mary, Michael, and I attended the kickoff meeting. It was great. We've gotten we have a long list, a long to-do list, and it's a very quick process. We, today, um, we received draft surveys for the community survey and the staff survey. So we'll be getting back to them um, with a, a few edits, but it looks great. I was really positive with those surveys. And we are looking for, um, Key community members. We will be having, we think we're going to have four focus groups. We have to go back to them and, and ask them to add an additional focus group. We're looking at, and correct me because I don't have this in front of me, so I'm going off my memory here. We're going to have um, seniors, community, uh, community organizations, so nonprofit organizations, you know, uh, businesses, local businesses, and Seven parents of children. We're going to hope we're we to add that, that one be in. A fifth. That'd be the fifth. Sorry, and fifth and, and seventh graders. Mm -hmm. So those will be our uh, community focus groups. We will have 10 key informant interviews where we'll be interviewing. Actually, the consultants will be interviewing one on one over the phone for an hour, up to an hour, uh, for people that we have identified that. Um, you know, really have a lot to offer. So we'd like to interview them on the phone. And then we have a community advisory committee that we're trying to put together right now, made up of key representatives of the community. And then we have a work group that is staff and board. And friends. And friends. And staff, board, and, and friends. 
<laughs> so the, the consultants will be on site for three days and they'll be holding the uh, community one giant community focus group in addition to all the individual focus groups. So they'll hold one giant community focus group, the individual focus groups, and then they'll meet with staff, board, and friends while they're here. Like three different times. Right. And so it'll be a busy and they'll meet with the community advisory council in person. Yes. And that will be, and that will be the 27th, we think the 27th, 28th, 29th. But it will definitely be that which is not a board meeting week. So that might be Okay. And I did send an email out to everyone today. So it's a very, especially for the employment interviews, because we are literally supposed to give them the list of 10 people who agreed to be interviewed by Friday. So we are asking that you, we brainstorm a lot and put together a list. And we're asking for your thoughts within basically. 24 hours um, to really say, oh, I know somebody, because there are some that just have an organization, but we didn't know mm -hmm. the person. If you know a person that you think would be good, or if we've missed a person you think would be a good addition, or if you have really strong opinion about somebody on our list, um, we would love to know. Uh, we know it's a very short term. You sent that to I sent it. Like a three or four to each right. Oh, yeah, I didn't open it because I got it from work. Yeah, it right, just, so I'll look at it because I do have, and I was just going to ask you, are you looking for names? Because I and I yes. did reach out to someone who I think is, would be great. Wonderful. And she asked, what do, what would that entail? Um, so I wasn't a hundred percent sure. Um, I, I wasn't sure like where she would be. Would she be one of the two? The 10, would she be in a focus group? Would, so I wasn't sure exactly how to respond without like scaring her off, you know, right? and saying the wrong thing, <laughs> saying, oh, you're going to be involved for weeks, whatever. She's, she's busy, but she's very, I think she'd be great. So I tried, I mean, the, <clears throat> with that email, All I right, tried to list like sort of what the expectation is mm -hmm. of okay. a person who does that. But call then or email me if you have a question. Yeah. And then right, I'll look at that and yeah. then see because I have a couple of other. We have a bit more time for the community, community yeah. advisory yeah. council. Okay. But, but the sooner we get the it, sooner the sooner the better. Agendas, but, yeah. you know, like the greater chance that they can get to yeah. see like where they would plug in. Okay. Right. I had a question on the your report because sure. I just it's probably a phrase I should understand. On the bottom of under operational excellence, like the fourth or fifth page on oh it's not what is the shared service desk model for an administrative assistant position? Is that something that I so I just mean sharing that was one of the desk? items that I was going to question. What is it? Let me see what, what he brought in. I believe what it, what it was is there, it was, the admin they were considering doing the, oh, I think yes. that. Yes. So I'll, I'll tell you what that is. Okay. So what we had talked about, um, I don't see it in the Okay. So these are, these are kind of two different things. The shared service, service desk model. model is something that we had originally discussed um, uh, combining the reference and circulation oh, desks no, and then no, circulation no, and yeah. services desks. And we talked, a, we talked about it during COVID. That was one of our priorities for this year. We did a lot of work on it. Um, so that is something um, that we had a carryover from last month's report too. That, that line. <laughs> but that's, that's what I thought. Yeah, I, I think it's a carryover. That doesn't belong there. It doesn't go together with the admin assistant position when you close the chart. Yeah, I think. I What's think, after that? Right. Doesn't I think really that's a carryover that. from last month because last month was a year to date. It was 2022's report. So that's a that's a carryover. That one sentence there ultimately was determined. Yeah, that, that's all a carryover. But if you look at that last, it's an error. If you look at the last, post about the target date for 
Yeah. Okay. That's, that's okay. for this right now. This round. Yeah. That's the a good question. It's not on the. It's, it's not, not on the. It's not supposed to be in there. Sentence. Yeah, look at last month's report. It's for, it's in last month's report, and it makes sense because it's got a full a paragraph. <laughs> at least it should. I'm sure it has a paragraph in last month's. Okay. Please go. Understand why I didn't understand. Yep, that makes total that makes total sense. Other one like that. Right the big top of the page. So last week. We also, oh, the audit, the auditors came last week too, Thursday and Friday. So they're done with all their field work and I've given them everything, all the functional expenses and we good to go. Trying to wrap up a lot of stuff here. Yeah, they thought that they would be done in the month. Yeah, well, they, they told me within a week, but I'm not gonna promise anything. They told me to be. <laughs> I'll be talking to them too. But you need those figures for your yeah, so I need to, I need those figures for the AUD and right now. So right now I'm also working on the annual report to library development. So I'm starting with the non-financial part of it, hopes that, because there's a lot of statistics and I've had a lot of help from the team here at the library to pull some statistics and I'm going to put everything in it. Yeah. But but I think we're in in close agreement, so I don't think there's going to be any giant shifts. Mm -hmm. And then this year is not that there's no training, trustee training piece for that. That's going to be next year, correct? Right? 2023 requirement. I think they ask for it this year, but it's not a requirement until 2023. So it's just a yes so or no question. Last year. Mm -hmm. We don't really need no, yeah. we weren't tracking. But, and, but they're just going to ask a yes or no question. And everybody here had training last year. Mm -hmm. So that's, we're, we're in good shape, even if it was required. Mm -hmm. Anything more? That's it. Any other questions, Bridget? Okay. If not, I guess we'll move on to your personnel. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, I just wanted to do one thing about sure. the open. Mm -hmm. oh, is there a price for that? Well, it was purchased for two thousand dollars. Is that what the price would be? Get that if they turn it. But then I read something that you want to look into where books can be dropped twenty four hours a day. Well, that was that was the old. That was what we. That was that was what we purchased it for, for and yeah. that was the priority in the strategic plan for the year that we were going to have twenty four seven book donations. But that has okay. since so not, that's not there anymore. To right, have because that capability. staff can't manage it and friends can't manage it, so it's it's yeah, not we've removed it from our list of priorities. Well, so speaking of that, there was mention of the. Free libraries. Mm -hmm. So, is that something like there'll be some ongoing uh, discussions? Yeah, I would love for we will love to talk with with the friends more about that. But I'd love to see if we can really formalize yeah the process there. And that was something that during the final wrap up equity training, there were some ideas about the types of books that we put in there, and you know, like really being. Kind of mindful of what we're putting in there, so that's something that I think we can talk with the friends about. And see what we can, can I just ask a question? When I've gone, I know it's not, yeah, <laughs> and for some reason, it seems like one always is kids' books like 90% kids' books, and one is like 90 or 100 or percent just regular adult. Is that the one by Janae? And then the one is by the yeah, and I didn't know if that was intentional or just no. Um, and I've gone and I've rebuilt, you know, uh, along the way, um, the house across the street, like directly across. Um, the little girl came out. Her name's Hadley. She says, "I'm going to help you. I'm going to fill." She's so cute. She's got to be I don't know, like ten years old or something. And 
So she, she might put books in there. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But, um, okay. so I, mean, I didn't know if it was intentional I, because I did it like two or three times. I went and I said, always what's I'd say because I've tried to mix, okay. but I don't know. But you don't know what really mm -hmm. goes on. Are you doing it right I now? Have, I have gone to, I mean, I've stopped, but I think because the weather's so nice, I might. Um, but you're going to grab some. You're the only one that's. So far, I, right, unless somebody else is stopping. doing, is it, and then if anyone else is restocking, that's great. Um, I haven't asked it, but I've had, like, you know, people, friends have dropped off books, and you know, just along the way, I've just been, you know, I've come here and I've grabbed books from friends. So, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if by today too, the children's books get scooped up right away. Oh, oh, because yeah. maybe so child centric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That maybe those go immediately. Yeah. Check with Hadley too. I know, yeah. yeah. But we should get some, get some extra dog comes out. <laughs> and that's better than a community. Yeah. So yeah. She knows some stuff. Yeah, get on the yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> she really is cute. She really is cute. Yeah. 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 Any other anything else? Personnel memo. There's a a, a it's really a retirement of Leanne Cullough, longtime part time library clerk. We're all very sad to see Leanne go, how much she deserves her retirement. And that um, she deserves it tremendously. Um, so she, she's been in many times. This, this didn't make it to last month's agenda, but she officially retired December 11th. So, so far, we've been able to. Kind of adjust and transition some hours with some other people on staff to fill her to fill her role. We will have to hire um, before the spring. We're going to have to hire before the summer for sure. Because things are picking up. We're going to have to hire. And we also we have one person who we know of that will be leading us in the fall because she's a she's a part time she's a clerk. She's going to law school, which is great for her. Yeah, yeah. for us. <laughs> But we don't have to act on any justices. You just have to accept it. You have to accept the personnel now. So do we need a motion? Yes. Uh, we'll make a motion to accept one. Charlie, and second. Michael. Any more discussion? Need a vote? All in favor? Unanimous. All right, and we'll business. Want me to talk about the SCODA contract? I can. Sure. So we received the contract from SCODA, as you recall, there's um, the whole history, but right now we budgeted a set amount um, for SCODA. We then sent them a letter, and then they put it in their budget, and then this is they generated basically a contract. Well, we sent them a contract too. We sent them that, a we, that we wrote. Oh, this but they just did? did. Oh, yeah, so we do it every but year. They, they sent their but own. But they contract. they always send their own. But luckily, it's the uh, same amount. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> waiting. <laughs> oh, the it was yeah, it was also like, no. uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> it's no, they had all this. <laughs> all, all this. So this would authorize me to sign. Which is in the amount that was budgeted. So, has it been correct? It was correct. It was correct. Yep. Yes. Yes. Also, also, so I will entertain a motion to reassign that contract. Michael, Any conversation? Uh, we are planning to uh, talk to them. For the more longer range, we would love to get a, con a contract established or formula. formula or some provisions that made it not every year a question about what it is, you know, because it honestly is difficult for us and it's difficult for them when nobody really knows. What is the basis for next year's uh, cost? So we're 
planning to do that. And actually, I think we had a little conversation and we are going to talk about strategic planning and at the same time, set up a meeting to get this week. But realistically, I, I think we've got so many things going right now that we will start a discussion with them and start a process of looking at it. It is it, it fairly involved. Many, many things you could look at on how to do this contract. So I think they'll have a working thing. I think for this year's budget, there'll be one more year of uh, doing the same percentage as each member of the percentage so what we've done the last several years. And put them work towards then for the next cycle to have something in place. Yeah, any conversation, any questions? Did I see the no. town of Skodak? Do we have people coming for the strategic plan? Mm -hmm. We, we have several. Oh, okay. yes, we have. We tried to make sure they were in every focus group, and definitely on the community advisory council, and is also some of the key employment individuals. We tried to make sure there was good representation. I thought I saw that, but I wanted to be sure. Uh, yes. It's a log on here. Oh, yeah. I don't have the Wi Fi on it. So it's okay. Any other discussion questions? Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a vote to authorize me to sign this contract. All in favor? Unanimous. Um, I do not believe I need a motion, but but I would like to appoint to last at the last meeting I talked about this ad hoc facilities committee um, that would really be working. And I invited anybody interested to volunteer. The idea is it's a relatively short term committee, at least at this point, um, whose purpose is really to work through the building condition survey process. Uh, it's beginning actually this week. On February 16th, the uh, contractor that we brought in is going to meet with the facilities committee and Joe to begin the process. Um, so I had a couple volunteers and uh, Michael Post and Charlie. Is that how I say it? <laughs> okay. And uh, Charlie has agreed to be the chair of that committee. So I. Can, can you make it during the day? And so I would. Like to get that in the minutes, but I do not believe it requires a vote. Questions or comments or welcome? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so that they will begin their work right away and they will begin the work on the agenda. That, that committee ends at the point that this process is done unless we decide to extend. Which in all likelihood. I expect it to be. But we'll take that step when we when we get there. Poor Charlie was like, what? <laughs> this is a long <laughs> Oh, you'll get used to it. It's all good. Okay, with that, we'll take some liaison reports to begin. Um, so on the book, Captain, I did write to Tim and Nyla and Gary Kappas and gave to Verbiage to send it out over there. I mean, glass to all the libraries to see if we can find something that um, make it so I've got the dimensions and the, what it would take to move it. So, yeah. we pay for it. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, that that was negotiated down from like three or four thousand. At this point, I just want it off the property. I, I hear you. <laughs> yes. If I can use it, that's great. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. Dog house, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, that is in the process. We'll provide the spring. Yeah, here. Um, the other biggest thing that we've been doing is the membership campaign. We started with our uh, online email last one out, and Lynn was the very first little star, first one to use it um, outside of our test group. So um, we did get about a dozen online registrations, which was good uh, for our first time out. The mail house has all our stuff and hopefully in the next week or two, you'll see the paper forms go out to the community. Um, everything is on Kilo, the database is updated. So we're really 
switched over out of uh, Excel into Kiva. So I have one question about mm -hmm. you had an individual, you have a household, mm -hmm. I think it's 20, 30, then you have a senior that's 10, and then you have a student that's 10. Mm -hmm. How do I do two seniors? You can do what the one person did was they each signed up separately and they get twenty dollars. You can it's it's open for I, do it as a other. I get it. I do it as a family and I usually put a contribution in there. You can There's do the problem. other, you can just pick others and put in which one. Mm -hmm. I'm at the other end of it, I can figure out what they meant. I, I, I noticed that when I did it online yeah. and I actually put it in the comment box because mm -hmm. I wanted to do two seniors and then my plan is to scrap that whole system. Going forward, I'd like to work with something different. It's like patron, it's something literary terms, and it's an absolute <coughs> level, you know, just something like that. It's not based on demographic. I don't think that's right in this day and age. I think it should be something different. So that's my plan is to, I need a chance to get in there and get this out. But next year, I hope that you won't even see anything like that. It'll be completely different. It's something fun, like work. But good job. I mean, it was wonderful to finally be. Online. Yeah. Yeah, I can actually went on today and looked and then I said, do I go through this and try and figure this out? <laughs> or do I just print it out and put it, it out? Out. I love you, Mike. Oh, yeah. we, we, we just got on the teams and not, not fully <laughs> Well, my team still isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> there are many people in this room who have worked hard to get us <laughs> everything yeah. online. So thank you very yeah. much for taking it over the finish line. My my goal is that maybe by three years from now we would have seventy five percent that the mailing would have to be a small expense that we just mailed to a few folks, but it would be where you got used to. That's a long term goal, but this was step one. And yeah, it's a long term goal. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Um, and whether or not we're working with people who sale. We have been doing so well with the online for the ongoing sales. Um, so last January we did about 200 sales, this January we did 1,000 sales. Because this is doing so well, the shed is not turning to see. Normally we have about 530 boxes of books. That's what we have the last sale. And that was a low number for us. Right now there's 100 some odd books of boxes of books in the shed. Wow. Um, so, even if we double that number, we'd be going into April sale with about 300 boxes of books. So we could build it as a mini sale, but we don't want people to walk in and go, oh, that's it, and never come back. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we have a reputation for having a very good sale. So my team is going to be meeting um, Thursday. We're going to brainstorm, should we do this? Should we go over some years? Should we do a mini sale? Should we, should we, should we slow down the ongoing sale? So we look at all the different options and make a recommendation with friends board. But if we don't do the April sale, I'm sure no matter what we do, we're going to get some black. In April, we do a scale down sale or we do no sale. I mean, there's a different month, so just a heads up. That there's a reason behind it. It's a good problem to have. Our books are selling well on the ongoing shelf, but um, we don't have that crack up anymore in the shed that we would need to do a sale. And there's a cost and a lot of volunteer effort that goes into every sale. So we want to be sure that we're getting the bang for the buck. So, would it be worth asking or like pushing for donations or? Um, I mean, we're getting good donations. It's just that they're selling. That's right. So, and the puzzles are going like crazy. People love them. And now that people know that we're collecting them, we are getting a massive amount of puzzles every day. And they're selling like crazy. So it's going really well. We're getting good donations. And that garbage has dropped off. That problematic stuff that went straight to the recycle bin and became an expense for the library that has dropped off. We're, we're getting some good quality donations. So um, it's not for lack of donations. It's for... We're doing a very good job of working with yeah, them. Is the group thinking uh, about children's festival again? Or we are not considering that right now. Um, we are thinking about doing the children's books during the kickoff of the summer reading program. I think that really well. We're doing those two items together. So that would be another set of books that would not go to the sale in April. It will go back. And parents really like having a vehicle sale as well. So I just want to make sure that the perception and people walk away happy. So that's what we're trying to come up with. Um, at this time, I don't think we're interested in doing a children's festival. Of something that's more appropriate and only the staff and teachers in the place. Mm -hmm. Sort of open to ideas, break food. Mm -hmm. I guess we had kind of outgrown. I mean, the children's festival was becoming 
more than you. It was a lot. It was a lot. Yes, but it was not too long. So. So I didn't know. I didn't realize. So last year you did a little bit of a children's book. So you did a hallway sale right during the first week, and yes. it, it was crazy. Yes, <laughs> raised a lot of money during that. But right now I have like six boxes of children's books. They're just going so fast. Mm -hmm. So yeah. promise to have them. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. So that's what's going on. Great. Yeah, nice nice I feel like not, but I do have somebody. You know, you open your mouth and complain to me. I come back like, "Why are you like involved?" Someone who's considering it at the moment because she opened her mouth. Perhaps so. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't show up. Got to be part of the solution, you know. <laughs> Great, thank you. Any questions, Julia? I have one more question on the if we pay by the credit card. <laughs> is, are you charged a percentage? So there's seven. Because um, it had those it amounts has, considered this and it was a varying amount. It adds 76 cents yeah. to help cover the processing fee. So you have yeah. the option. So my question is because I normally include a donation with it, do I want the donation to be diminished by, by the processing fee? Well, if you look at it in the future, not this year, but in the future, I will be mailing to you. So I'll be saying we're printing the postage. So the offset of the fee. <laughs> And is it 76 cents per transaction? So that's what it says on the website. Well, no, because depending on which one you check, it's a different yeah, percentage. Yeah, so they establish some the transaction fee that's based on a percentage. Okay. Um, but in the long run, if it saves me, the mailing is custom is about $600. Mm -hmm. So if you know, I have to look at the transaction fees in the long run and you know, the increase in donations of the change of infrastructure, mm -hmm. I think it's just a sign of time since it's part of well, what I we need to do. It is. And but a lot of people have checked I, that they're paying. You know, there's a lot of places that, that uh, you know, they now have. If you pay by, if you pay by credit card, they add a charge for it. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, and what is it? It could be three percent or something. So that you have the option, but but you don't have to okay. help cover the processing yeah. fees. It's that's, it's that's not what I'm concerned. You're I, saying if you make a $100 donation, I would pay more. More yes. of it will come out. As a fee, yes, yes, I understand. Um, it is what it is, you know. So yes, we both, we as a friend get less money than we would if we had a check. But in the long run, down the road, I think that's hopefully you also get more people donating. Right, you would have just because yeah. it's quick. If you were like done yeah. yeah. a check, I'd be less than fine. Yeah. For me, I, I would just pay. Like if I was doing a smaller donation, it's a dollar seventy-six, which is a lot of them. If you're doing the thirty dollars, I think that's your money doing a dollar or something. Most people are saying, yes, I'll pay the $31. Mm -hmm. If they're doing a large amount, I see that they're not checking that box. They're just making the donation and not paying mm -hmm. the transaction fee. But I'm still getting way over what they would have done. So um, and if it's less in the end for the treasurer to have to manage, I think that can be the greatest arguments. Mm -hmm. They do the other forms. Do you guys do the other forms like PayPal, Venmo? Right now, we've only set up for PayPal, which is a credit card for. Okay. I think there is some Kila Pay thing, which I have. That's another that may have less transaction fees. But not today. <laughs> today step, one. step one. <laughs> We're on. Okay. Any, any other questions? Julia, if not, uh, Ed's not here tonight, so we have no town report. Over to you, Tom. Great. I came across a list that told me that the word liaison is one of the most commonly misspelled words in the English language. Really? <laughs> but did we spell it right? You did. I'll be keeping track of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because when you said that, I was typing the word liaison, and I spelled it incorrectly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It auto corrected. Yeah, apparently it shows up on resumes because people won't always consider themselves to be a liaison or something like that. So, yeah. Uh, second eye. It's a killer. It'd be terrific for wordles. Yeah, like, oh, exactly. too many letters. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, first of all, thanks for letting me participate in the DEI uh, presentations. They were pretty cool. I mean, I learned a lot. It was, uh, it was a good thing, uh, I think, for all of us, particularly for. 
For me, I appreciate it. DMV still working on uh, getting into 99 uh, route, uh, route 4. It's coming along. They estimate uh, March, but I'm going to say April just to be a little bit pessimistic and maybe a little more realistic. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be state of the art. It's going to have pretty much everything you need, special licenses, all that's going to be a great spot. And the Troy DMV is going to continue too. So it's just an expansion. Of the is this one going to be appointment only as well? Or? I, I, not initially, no. I mean, you can make appointments for certain things, but the, the general, you know, going in uh, should not be appointment. Uh, but again, subject to change, we'll see how the, the workload is. It's, it'll be a little bit chaotic the first couple of weeks it's in there. So, uh, but it, it's not the intent. And for certain specific tasks, it'll be uh, appointment. Just to read, Just to read oh, FYI. But... It'll be appointment only, but it's, it's not meant to be like that. It's meant to be a, a quick in and a quick out when you get there. Is there a county clerk office there? County clerk, well, the county clerk is located next to the courthouse. That's where there's a, count, there's a DMV office that the county clerk runs in Troy, and the DMV office the county clerk will run in, in East Greenbush. But the county clerk's office itself is right next to the, it's behind the courthouse in Troy. Yeah, and that's just going to stay, stay there. there. Yeah, it's going to stay there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, sales tax is booming. Uh, county, uh, Received over 120 million dollars in revenue and sales tax. It's, it's it's really unbelievable. It's probably because of online, um, you know, transactions. People are ordering things from their homes in Mensa County, and it's been it's been quite a thing. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's not an upward upward spiral. Um, and an important, really important note: this this fentanyl crisis is really really bad. Uh, I mean, I know it sounds you know obvious, but I was looking at stats recently and it had the breakdown of, you know, Rensselaer, Rensselaer mailing and East Greenwich mailing, and it looked pretty good. And then when you dive deep on it, since a lot of us have a Rensselaer mailing address, it really is a problem here in East Greenwich. Uh, if you see some stats, it shows like Rensselaer a certain amount in East Greenwich. We look pretty good if you're just looking at East Greenwich. But if you're looking at the town of East Greenwich that has a Rensselaer mailing address, we're, we're, pretty, we're in pretty bad shape. You know, we're not that, Troy's set aside, but we're up there. And so the next couple of breakdowns, I'm going to try and have them outline, you know, town of East Greenbush, and that'll make it readily apparent of uh, what we're having here. So this is not an inner city type situation. This is, this is us. And it's, uh, you know, you have people going into the emergency room. There aren't a lot of beds anymore because some people are in the hallways. Uh, thank God, goodness we've got the naloxone to prevent a lot of fatalities, but my gosh, this is, this is really un, un, unbelievable. I mean, I'm old enough, I remember the crack epidemic back in the, in, in the 70s. You know, people are dying here, and um, there's got to be a real focus on, on, on what we're doing here as a community. We can't be smug and think that we're, we're not in this. Thank you. Sorry about that, but this is just really, really important. And so, if, um, and we keep getting reports from the schools, and it's just, it's not getting, it hasn't turned the corner yet. Um, the mental health groups are trying to get together and, and, and work with the state. And the state's been pretty good at trying to acquire more bed, bed space, but this is, demand is really out, outpacing what we can, uh, we can handle here. So, if you, again, just my only message is, we can't be smug because the numbers of East Greenwich look relatively small. Because when you really add the town of East Greenwich mailing address and friends, so we're we're right there. So is there a role that you can think of for the library with prevention? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot. I mean, uh, there's a lot of good literature out there. I mean, uh, I think you'll you'll be getting reached out to if you haven't before about posters and, and things where you can uh, contact uh, uh, mental health uh, providers and the health department. Uh, training on naloxone is very important. So if the library, I think you've We've done it. Before. Yeah. And if you keep doing that, it's, right. yeah. I mean, that's, I hate to say it. I mean, it's, it's reactive right now. Everybody, if they can, should try and get trained on naloxone and have a couple of naloxone things either in their house or in their cars. Um, what, what do you mean by that? Yeah, I don't know. Sure. It's a, it's kind of a, a gadget where you can, you, you, it's not, it's not that, no it's a, it's a no spray. And what that does is it generally, yeah, 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 yeah same thing. Right. It's not, yeah. it's, uh, and it reverses the effects of the, in, in most cases, 
But here's the, the strain of fentanyl, whatever the combination, it's starting to break through on the Narcan now. So it's not as effective as it used to be. Um, we've had cases where uh, it started out, we had to do a number of doses, doses of Narcan and, until the person would come around. Now we've, we've seen some cases where even that doesn't work. So it's just, it, it's- How do you acquire the- The Narcan? Yeah. Um, Generally, you know, a lot of doctors are doing it. Pharmacies, like Price Chopper or Market 32 Pharmacy, is not required to have Narcan there. Uh, you can go through training from the health department to, uh, to uh, you know, it's not that difficult of training uh, to be able to uh, acquire Narcan. But most of the pharmacies, we passed uh, local law uh, last year requiring pharmacies of a certain size to have the Narcan there. So I'd say the first step, if you have a local pharmacy, just ask them for the, the Narcan. Uh, there are no no locks on how they would refer to it. It's real important. It's just so uh, it's it's scary stuff. It's really scary stuff. And uh, you know, yeah, I'm not advocating drugs or by any means, but people are taking drugs that they think are relatively safe, and they're not. And now you're starting to break through with the with the spray. It's it's not being effective. So just. That, that's sorry about that. Sorry to end on a downer. Yeah, you just a um, kind of piggybacking on what Tom said um, with the county, the co her the coalition, heroin coalition, the heroin, yeah. heroin coalition. Um, I just quickly looked up online, mm -hmm. and Katie, that you can text the word Narcan, Narcon to twenty one hundred or tw twenty one thousand yeah. to arrange for it to be delivered to your doorstep. No, no questions yeah. asked. Um, and then. Fentanyl test strips are also made available to residents yep. now. And the it's Heroin Coalition now has been meeting at Hudson Valley every six weeks. Hudson Valley's very invested in this to try and, uh, so the word is just getting out, just if you can, you know, keep keep spreading the word. What is the name of the coalition? Heroin. Oh, heroin. Yeah. Like, do you think control. it's something like a poster we could put on the community board to advertise that number? Is that something that the library? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I, mean, I didn't know. I know they have all these different text numbers now. Um, mm -hmm. It's not just nine one one. There's another nine eight eight or something. Is there something like a new one? Oh, so you know, if you wouldn't like to turn out the county right. Right. Yeah. The yeah. So there's different. Uh, yeah. What's your name? Yeah, we're on the. Yeah, you're a member of the Herald Coalition. Yeah. So we'll. Um, I mean, it raises an issue when you talk about even the mental health side of it. Yes. Like in the strategic planning process, we didn't really talk about engaging those folks in a focus, you know, like what the role of the library. Because mental health, I mean, that the fentanyl issue is part of it. Yeah. Mental health issue goes way even beyond that. Where the law, you know, like, I wonder if there's. I, I wonder if we bring in somebody, partner with somebody from the county. Yeah, yeah. I, guess friend will do it. Yeah. I mean, I guess as you look at that, I mean, I just realized when you said it, we we missed that. We missed it. So if you know anyone in that community that we should involve in our uh, focus group on community services and or have on the community advisory council, just think we really should have that represented. I, I, if you would, I'd reach out to Mary Fran with Tunis. I mean, she's the co the co director of the heroin uh, uh, task force uh, with Sheriff Russo. And, you know, again, Sheriff Russo is a great guy, but I think Mary Fran might be a little bit more uh, a, a good a, a good person to have. Here. Is she the nurse? Is she? She's on uh, that. They're uh, public health director. Yeah. I was also thinking social worker, like maybe social worker from the high school. Sure. That's a good. And opinion. that's kind of a bridge between. The mental health, the needs that we're seeing for teens, and then this as well. Yeah, you're, you're right, Katie. I think this is real important, of including the strategic plan. I was going to mention it in my conversations with them. That it's um, it's just barely under the surface. I mean, it's just about ready to, you know, to pop back up, pop up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Any questions for Tom? Not, I guess so. For a yeah, just yeah, have a couple of things. Uh, I was at the meeting um, last week, which was um, really nice. I I continue to enjoy 
my time on the Upper Hudson Library Board. Um, everyone there is really so passionate about their library and libraries in, in general. They, that it, it's really, um, it's just a great group to be around. Um, I wanted to give a telephone number if anyone was interested in getting advocacy updates. So Tim gave us a whole uh, uh, packet for Library Advocacy Day, which is Tuesday, February 28th. And he gave us the legislative meeting schedule. Um, if anyone is interested uh, in joining up, um, you know, everyone, well, not everyone works, but there's, a, there's an outline of um, different times and the offices of um, legislators that, that they're going to visit. So um, if and anyone oh, sorry, just, are they going to do um, virtual? No. No. They're all in person. Yeah. Yeah, it's back to that. So um, so advocacy updates if you if you're interested in the number is 716 271-2182. Um, I have a big shout out that's going to Jill from Upper Hudson. Um, really happy with um, your involvement with the loan rules and card registration. Any help that you did with that, um, Tim? They just couldn't. They couldn't say enough about how valuable your involvement was, and they would. They were just. Like couldn't pat you on the back enough. Um, they were really, really pleased with um, a lot of work with a lot of people. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but still, you were involved, and they and Joe Burke. Um, he really likes you. Like, yeah, he's he's great. Um, yeah. So it was it was a great it was a great. Um, let's see if you're interested in any books to read on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Here are the two that they suggest. Um, Graceland and South to America. I don't know author. I, did, I was just you know, writing as I'm going. Um, but, you know, stable organization that's, you know, just doing well. They do still have space at their headquarters for any organization, any business. Um, if you know of anyone that's looking for office space, like turnkey situation. I will say that I went to a couple of those uh, NILA advocacy days and they're very well organized mm -hmm. and really important and mm -hmm. really well received. I, in my life and other aspects of my life, I've done advocacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's yeah. quite a difference when you go in Everybody loves library, you know. <laughs> like whatever. I said, "Wow!" I mean, it's just amazing to go in when everybody just embraces you and says, "Oh, you do such good work." So it's a very empowering day if you have an opportunity to go. It's just it kind of gives you a perspective, and they obviously control the purse strings, yes. so it's an yes. important day as well. But then yes. it's very well organized. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that all of the governors have used as a bargaining chip. So every year when the governor's budget is released, libraries are cut significantly. So the advocacy is critical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the legislators generally are you know, very positive, very yeah. supportive. You know, and that's why they're great. Bargaining. Yeah. Tim did tell a quick story about how they went to one. Um, maybe it was last year, I remember last year, and immediately the legislators was talking about how this Tesla, uh, the electronics in the Tesla wasn't great and how the steering wheel really didn't get warm and how the governor needs to just calm down about the, the electric cars and everything else and needs to talk about other things. And they were like, okay, can we just 
you know, bring it back to the library. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about your Tesla. Are you suggesting we put in some charging stations? In yeah, he thinks room? there's like. Uh, <laughs> Person of the people. Yeah, yeah really. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Oh, that's that. Hey, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. And thank you for representing mid-sized library, sorry. Um, mid-sized rents of Mid-sized rents of Canada. Okay, any new business? Do you have any new business? Does anyone have any new business? If not, I will entertain the most popular motion of the month. Anyone? Okay, Rick Mary. Motion to return. Come on, Charlie, second. Come on. Sure. I'm going to make it though. Good. <laughs> if I had one, we'll look at that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I will stop the live stream now. Okay. Thank you.